Hello teachers and welcome to Number Corner PD. Let's get started. Hey, so what is Number Corner anyhow? Number Corner is a daily math routine that is designed to help students develop a deep understanding of number sense. Number Corner is a collection of quick daily skills activities that make use of classroom display featuring a calendar, uh, growing collections, number lines, and more. The display engages students and contributes to a math-rich classroom environment that promotes procedural fluency and conceptual understanding. So let's look at uh, a little bit about math culture. The beauty of Number Corner is that it helps provide a math culture in your classroom. So what are the benefits of Number Corner? Well, Number Corner has been shown to be effective in helping students to develop a deep understanding of number sense, to improve their math fluency, increase their confidence in their mathematical abilities, and develop a love of math. So next, let's take a look at creating a culture of mathematical thinking. Moving on to Number Corner's overview, let's take a few minutes to listen to some thoughts. Let's think math talk for a minute. What is a math talk? Well, students are encouraged to share their thinking to talk about math and develop strategies for thinking about math. So how is Number Corner structured? Each day, a new Number Corner is introduced. Students are given a variety of activities to help them explore the new number. Activities may include counting, comparing, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Students are encouraged to use manipulatives and other tools to help them solve their problems. Students are also encouraged to share their thinking with their classmates. So, the best time to do your number corner is probably about the 15 minutes before you go to lunch. This way, you limit yourself to only the 15 or 20 minutes and no more. It's so tempting to keep going with your math talk because your students will enjoy it. But this is only meant to spark their math brains and to introduce the concepts of the following month's Bridges lessons. Considering the three major components of Number Corner, you will need a large bulletin board area to do Number Corner. And let's talk a minute about Calendar Collector. So every day you will turn over a new calendar card to reveal a new mathematical clue. Turn over Saturday and Sunday's clues along with Monday's. You'll record the day's data on the calendar grid observations chart and on the calendar collector record sheet. Both of those will be created by you. There will be an occasional day missed because of conflicts with school functions, so don't worry about it. Just pick up where you left off and keep going. On the days that there are activities, 
Focus on the activity more than the calendar. Activities will take a little longer than 15 minutes, so you should plan the 20 to 30 minutes for that day's number corner. So when presenting Number Corner to students, it's important to be enthusiastic. Students are more likely to be engaged in Number Corner if they can see what you're excited about. Be clear and concise. Explain the activities and expectations clearly so that students know what they're supposed to do. Be patient. Some students may take longer than others to grasp the concepts being taught. Be patient and offer support as needed. And finally, be positive. Focus on the students' successes and celebrate their accomplishments. Here are some additional tips for presenting Number Corner to students. Make it interactive. Use activities that get students moving and talking. Make it visual. Use pictures, diagrams, and manipulatives to help students understand the concepts being taught. Make it relevant. Tie the activities to the students' interests and experiences. And finally, make it fun! Number Corner should be an enjoyable experience for students. Here's an example of Number Corner that shows a different way of laying things out. And notice that some of the uh, materials have been laminated, so this teacher doesn't have to recreate the same thing year after year. It's a great idea. You want to elevate the discourse in math. Student-led number corner. Hey, my third grade teacher assistant snapped this photo as she was choosing the student who would lead the day's number corner. Now, think student voice. Think teacher guided, but students running the process. Think peer-to-peer -peer learning. The key to achieving this level of class participation is found in consistent routines and expectations. When students know what to do and how to do it, they can actually guide the process of learning, and they begin to think strategically. Now here's a little tip from me to you. Save your labels, which is the top part of like your calendar grid observations, your calendar collector uh, charts. Save the tops of those. The tops of every calendar grid observation chart are savable for next year. All you have to do is cut it off and laminate it either before you use it or after the chart's final use. You'll want to do the same thing with all the labeling that you have to create. This means your first year of creating all the new bridges materials is the hardest. After that, you'll be able to easily prep each month's number corner because you'll only have to recreate the parts that get written on. So keep in mind the idea is to do number corner for 15 to 20 minutes a day. The math wall shows the calendar, the vocabulary word chart, the calendar collector, and the calendar grid observation chart. Just remember that it does take up a lot of space. So number corner, in your kit, there are three volume binders and a number corner assessments, which is in what's called an assessment guide. Up to five types of activities, which will vary by grade and 20 minute maximum workout a day. But keep in mind, there are some activities that might take just a little bit more time, but most take 15 to 20 minutes. So in third grade, you've got the calendar grid, the calendar collector, and you have a number line plus computational fluency and solving problems. But over there in fourth grade, you can see that you've got 
the same number one and number two, but a number three instead of the number line, you've got problem strings. So that's really the difference between the third grade number corner and the fourth grade and fifth grade number corner. So now number corner organization. This is my advice. Add color coded post-its to divide the sections up so it's easy to access and flip around and know where you are inside your um, teacher's manuals. You want to print and highlight key questions, resource cards, and always have your binder nearby for easy reference. You need that as a teacher. You need your teacher's manual. And here's an example of a September uh, number corner display. You got a pocket grid chart, you got the observation chart, you have a classroom number line. So what is this? This is third grade, right? With a number line. That's right here. You have your uh, calendar collector record sheet and each number corner varies just slightly. So you'll have to be um, on top of, you know, knowing what you have to create and how you're going to display it up in your classroom. And here's another example. And another example. I just wanted you to see how varied number corners can be. Next, let's take a look at a number corner video. This is a third grade classroom in action. And as a great resource for you, I've got this number corner gallery. When you get the slide deck, the link up here will take you to all kinds of real life teacher examples of number corner and how they displayed them. And you'll get some great ideas from this resource. Now let's take a look at some academic language within number corner. And this next part is super important. We're going to take a look at grade level team unit planning. You have to work together as a team. It really helps to eliminate the volume of work that there is to do with Bridges Number Corner. So your grade level team unit planning sessions are super important and you're going to want to know how to do it step by step. All right, let's take a look at the collaborative unit planning for Bridges Number Corner together. So step one, identify the learning objectives. The first step is to identify the learning objectives for the unit. What do you want students to learn about numbers and number sense? Step two, select activities. Once you know the learning objectives, you can start selecting activities that will help students achieve these objectives. There are many different activities that you can use for number corners, such as counting, comparing, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, using manipulatives, solving problems, and sharing thinking. All right, let's take a look at step three organizing the activities. Once you have selected your activities, you need to organize them in a way that makes sense. You may want to organize them by concept, by difficulty level, or by time. Step four, create a schedule. So once you have organized your activities, you need to create a schedule for the unit. This will help you stay on track and make sure you have enough time to cover all of the material. And step five, share the plan with your colleagues. Once you have a plan, it's important to share it with your colleagues. This will help you get feedback and make sure that everyone is on the same page. Now step six is to implement the plan. 
And once you have a plan, it's time to implement it. Be sure to monitor student progress and make adjustments as needed. Step seven is to assess student learning. So, at the end of the unit, it's important to assess the student learning, and this will help you determine how well students have met the learning objectives. And then the final step is to reflect on the unit. Once you have assessed student learning, it's important to reflect on the unit. What went well? What could be improved? This information will help you plan future units. So let's just reflect for a moment from what we just heard. One, do the math. Two, make sure that you relate the standards and the big ideas. And number three, make math connections and try to resolve misconceptions. You want accurate models and you want to give support. And four, provide background for the unit. And then the last one, reading the modules, you guys should divide and conquer the workload. I hope that helps with planning Bridges Number Corner units. Well, congratulations on making it through the overview of Bridges Number Corner uh, PD. And if you have more questions, Please reach out, contact me, I'm available to you. I would love to come out and partner you and help with your number corner. So until next time, see you later. Bye.